Hi and welcome to this short tutorial on fixing problems with the results from VLOOKUP in Excel. In the course of my work I find that I often have a spreadsheet in which I've got information that's been gathered from various different data sources and I've got the task of looking for values in one section of the data and displaying some of those values in another section of the data. Uh, typically that happens across worksheets, but to keep things simple, I've got everything on a single worksheet here. So I would look at having a table such as this one with some reference number in it. And this might be a customer number or a vendor number, something like that. And data associated with the reference number. So for example, a name. And my task elsewhere in the spreadsheet is to take a number, look it up in this table, and then display that value over in this section. So that's VLOOKUP. It's fairly obvious, and this tutorial is not about teaching you how to use VLOOKUP, but I want to look at some of the things that can go wrong when you get results that you don't quite expect. I actually tried looking some of this stuff up on YouTube myself and, and couldn't find any decent explanations, hence this video. This is how I found workarounds for these problems. So let's start by putting in the VLOOKUP. We simply want to take this value and we want to look in this table. We want to return the value from the second column and we are doing an exact match. And we get the result we expect. And when I extend down, top three get hits, and the bottom one, as I would expect, returns NA because 14 isn't in this list. So that all works fine, uh, except I, I've never liked the look of this value. I prefer to do something about it. So we can start by using the isNA function. And you'll see that that returns a Boolean value, true, uh, so true if it can't find it, false if it does find it. So I could go with that, but I, I'm still not too happy with that. I really would like to put some of, some text of my own in there. So, for example, the word not found. And we can do that like this. I'm going to put an if statement around the is NA. And I'm going to copy that. So I'm saying if is NA, so I get a value of true, then... I didn't find what I'm looking for. Otherwise, display the value that I now know is there. So this one gives me not found. And if I extend the formula up, these all stay the same because they are found. So everything looks good so far. But let's go and take a look at a similar example, but slightly different this time. I've got the same information here. I've got the same set of numbers. I've missed the 14 off because that isn't here. I've got a 2, I've got a 2, but I'm getting NA on my VLOOKUP. I, I kept it simple. I'm not using the big uh, if statement with the is NA, just using the lookups. But I'm still expecting to get a result. So what's, what's going on? Why is this not working? Well, despite the fact these look alike, if we dig a little bit deeper, and look at the format of the cells, I see that my reference number is in a general format. My lookup number is text. So it's not matching. So how do I fix that? Well, the general format treats a number as a number. So I need to convert my text value here into a number so that I get a comparison. An easy way to do that is with the value function. Now I should point out at this stage that I'm using Excel 2010, quite an old, value, uh, an old version. Uh, in more recent versions, the function you need is going to be number value. Does the same thing. But here, it's value. So when I change that, bingo, I've got the result I want. And when I extend the formula down, 
everything works. Okay, let's try another example. Still got problems. Format over here is text. Format here is text. So what's going on? Why aren't they the same? There's a two, there's a two. Well, I've put in an example of something that's happened to me once, and that is I've got a leading space on all of these. So I'm comparing text to text, but two is not equal to space two. So I can get around that with the trim function. There we go, problem solved. Okay, one final example to look at. Here I've got text again. Here I've got a number and I've set the decimal places to zero so it looks like an integer but we're dealing with the number format. So we got the reverse of what we saw in the earlier example. Uh, I need to convert my uh, number here into a text string the same format as this so that I can get a match. And to do that, I can use the text function. So the text function takes two parameters. You can see here a value and format of text. So comma and then in quotes, I'm going to put the pound symbol or the hash symbol, depending on whether you're US or UK. And once again, problem solved. So you get the idea. Um, you've got to make sure that even though things might look alike, you've got to make sure that they're actually the same format so that you're comparing apples to apples. Um, sometimes I've even found that I, I've had to combine some of these uh, a trim statement and within a text statement or vice versa. Uh, so Play around, look for examples. Uh, it's all solvable. You, you can do it. Good luck. Thank you for watching.